Hey guys and welcome to part 25 of my let's play of the PlayStation 2 and Wii version of Sonic Unleashed. We're finally doing some plot progression! But before we- the first thing we have to do is go to uh, Shamar because we've got to speak to Professor Pickle so that he can tell us where we need to go even though there is a Small continent just protruding out of the planet. It's kind of obvious where we need to go, I say. Ah, Sonic. So good of you to come. I have ascertained the location of Eggman Land. Are you prepared for immediate departure? I'm good to go. Go now, Sonic, and stamp out this evil at its source. <laughs> Welcome to Eggman Land, the brainchild of my heart and soul. This is my magnificent empire, made possible through my genius and the limitless energy harnessed from Dark Gaia. What? Whoa, this place is crazy. I'll never understand Eggman's tastes. But get a good shot. <laughs> Surprise? Yes, of course you are! Sonic! If you have any complaints, come deliver them to me in person. If you can, that is. <laughs> He's enjoying this way too much. Sonic! I can feel the last temple nearby. He must have built this place on top of it. Well, I guess we'll just have to tear it down. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. The final battle. There's no turning back now. Are you sure you're ready for this? All set. Okay, Sonic. This is it. Time to teach that funny old kook a lesson. Yeah, you are allowed to hit no. And it will just make you leave the stage. It's really weird. That's what I did on my first playthrough. Because I think I missed something. So I went back. And I was like, oh, so you can just hit back. Just end. Just don't go into the stage. And we'll just leave like, like it's nothing. So it takes you straight to Eggman Land. If you leave the level, it will just appear on the world map. That simple as that. It doesn't have a hub world. So it just takes you... There's no guy gate. There's no hub world. It just takes you to a level select. Unlike the HD version, which does have a hub world. Although you don't actually see it until you've beaten the game. So here we are with Eggman Land's day stage. Which is odd, because I'm pretty sure it's night time. Or at least it's so cloudy that it looks like night time. It doesn't look any darker at night than it does in the day. Not really something you see here because all the nighttime stuff takes place inside the buildings of Eggman Land. In the HD version, yeah, it looks absolutely no different. So, players of the HD version, or at least those familiar with Sonic Unleashed, will be aware of how infamous Eggman Land is. Thankfully, this is the PS2 and Wii version, and Eggman Land is nowhere near as difficult. That said, this was the S rank that gave me the hardest time on my first two playthroughs. I hated this S rank. It seems so strict. And in ways it still is, which is nothing really that new. The problem is that I didn't really know of any of the shortcuts. It wasn't until several years later, I, 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 I already S-ranked before anybody uh, accused me of cheating, this is not the HD version, where I totally looked at a video of how to play the level before I went and played the level. Hello, we have this guy again. By the way, this this can lead to some some really unfair design, which we will be seeing later on. This guy's green now instead of blue. It's totally different. But this version of Eggman Land 
isn't really that hard, but this S rank can be if you don't know where the shortcuts are. So the first shortcut I took, I homing attacked on some robots that I didn't know were there until I saw later, until I saw videos of it several years later, where I could avoid the drilling, the, the drilling, the drifting section. <laughs> we're not playing Sonic Colors, where I could avoid the drifting section and save myself a few seconds. I also pretty much just spammed the boost, so I always ran out. Which you don't want to do. I mean, for the most part, you can get away with spamming the boost, but you don't want to always do that. Because then you're not going to have any boost when you actually really need it. But Eggman Land, this version, it does still put all your abilities to the test. It's going to have you make use of all of them. However, unlike the HD version, Failing these abilities doesn't usually result in death. I mean, that Lightspeed Dash would have done, but for the most part, it's pretty safe. There are multiple pathways you can take. Simply not performing that ability is just going to make you take the longer the longer path. So you miss out on the S rank, but you're still uh, you're still going to you're still going to survive. For starters, we don't have the roller coaster of doom. We had a roller coaster section towards the start before the interceptor, but it wasn't nearly as difficult. It's still very slippery. You have got to be careful, but you do have dash pads to uh, keep you towards the center. Not many item boxes in this level, thankfully. I collected two, and I'm hoping that's all of them. You'd think, you'd think that the test playthrough wasn't too long ago, I'd remember, but I don't. I don't commit every single item box to memory, especially in the day stages. But it is possible to still collect every item box and get the S rank as long as you use those shortcuts and you try to go a bit speedy here. So, homing attacking these guys isn't what I'd recommend, right? This part can be annoying. Not there, right here, because sometimes this guy likes to spawn in a bit early and then Sonic just hits it. And I've died to that hovering electrical guy many times because he uh, used his electricity at a time I didn't want to. Same issue that I keep having <laughs> with those electrical enemies in Arid Sands. Because I think they are there right as the level begins. So if you... It all depends on how long you take. Right, we're approaching the end of the level now. This... Once you swing off this, I have never gone on to that bar. <laughs> Sonic will always just lock on to the enemy further ahead. Which is fine, because I can skip ahead like that and save myself two seconds. Which is it. Got the S rank, but... It took me so long on the first try, and it wasn't really any improvement on the next one or two playthroughs either. It's a hard stage to S rank when you don't know where all of the shortcuts are. It can be a hard stage to S rank when you do know where all of the shortcuts are. It's a strict one, even more so when you decide to try and go after the items, even if there isn't that many of them. It's also the only area in Eggman Land. There's no unique areas. In fact, Eggman Land Day doesn't have many missions at all. We have two op we no, we have two mandatory missions now, and one optional one. And it's gonna go back to that weird thing where the optional one unlocks right as you finish the mandatory one. It's like, why do we even go? Why don't we just do it? Especially when it's the only optional day stage. Right, collect 280 rings. Once again, you don't want to go collecting these ring too many of these rings right from the start. Because the item box in this stage is not right at the end, but it's a fair distance in, and it's very possible to get more than 280 rings before you get to that. Easily. Like they, give you, they give you more than enough rings in this level. I don't know, maybe, maybe you can hit that electrical shield guy and he'll be fine. He'll be fine? Well, he will be fine, but you'll get hurt. That's what I should say. Or these things, because you won't lose all of your rings. You only lose a percentage of them. Yeah, this is the non-drilling section that I kept doing before I knew that those enemies were there. But they're not, they don't appear in the ring mission. Yeah, for some reason, Sonic decided he wanted to start running really slowly there for some reason. For, uh, I don't know. This Ferris wheel. Let the homing attack go up a bit. The path is slightly different design. You want to go down here, follow the trail of rings, and take the upper path. And this is how you get to the item box. 
this. Follow the trail. It's a light speed dash. It'll take you along with some of these roller coasters. See, I'm getting really close to my ring poison now, but thankfully there's that. Grab these, and then this last one gives me enough. So again, don't go collecting too many rings in that section. So, we've played through a four and a half minute stage. We then played through about, like another quarter of that stage. But because Eggman Land has a whopping five Werehog levels, we've got to try and pad out this daytime stuff even longer. So, we're now going to have you play Eggman Land Day all over again. It's time for the time attack. And as we've seen with some of the other stages already, it's the exact same stage. The entire thing. And that, that's the thing. Whenever this has happened in the previous time attacks, Generally, they've been the optional ones. Here, this is mandatory. You have to do this, and the stage is exactly the same. The, diff the main difference being is that I can actually die in this stage now. And die I do, because for some reason, egg I don't know how many times I've said that sentence. How many times have I said for some reason in this part alone? Uh... Eggman Land decided it wanted to get a bit on the glitchy side. I mean, when, not so much here. In this mission, most of the problems are my fault. If not all of them. But, uh... Yeah, these robots. Uh, in the Werehog stuff, the game started getting a bit on the glitchy side. Like, certain buttons like, were becoming unresponsive. Sonic started moving in directions that I didn't want him to move in. The lock, the lock on cursor was clearly on the upper one there. But I don't know what was going on, but it's going to lead to a fair number of deaths throughout the night stages. Uh, but luckily, this game is very generous with its S ranks. Since they're not score based, uh, it's still very easy to get even when you die a number of times. But, uh, so. <laughs> There's nothing else to say here. This is exactly the same stage, but I did encounter something I also found out in my uh, test playthrough. This part sucks. Seriously. Because, well, we know this guy has you can attack in two ways. You can either attack the sides or you can attack the center. The problem is that if he attacks the center, you will go past the springs like that and you will die. Meaning you have to take that hit if he does that center attack. Otherwise, you're going to go flying off flying off the edge if you decide to quick step left or right. So when he does that, it's perfectly fine. But if he does the center attack... I don't know, it just didn't seem to last as long. Maybe it's just because I was boosting right at the start, but you know. You're going to boost, that's the point. Why would you not make the spring wide enough? Because we're going to see this again later on. Every other spring is perfectly fine. Like, that one looks wide enough. And as far as I'm aware, I can quick step to the far left or the far right here, and I will be perfectly fine. I, I'm still guaranteed to hit this spring. Although I st still quick step there and got hurt anyway. I ended up actually uh, failing to kill this guy. I don't remember if I've ever actually failed this before, but uh, it doesn't matter, he dies anyway. Just uh, goes into this automatic sequence. And he crashes into the wall. So either you can kill him or he can kill himself. Either way, you win. It's just like the first egg cauldron in uh, the HD version. Either you can destroy it or it will destroy itself. Not the Eggman Land one though. Either you destroy it or it destroys you. I don't know what happened there, but we all know how uh, awkward this wall, this wall jump is in this version. I think these are always circled. One thing I do like about this stage, I do like the rocket. I don't know why, the rocket's just cool. But generally, these missions... Okay. <laughs> these missions generally aren't too bad. They're repetitive, but they're not too bad. It's the optional one that I really hate. It is one of the worst missions in this entire game. Mainly just because of the opening. More than anything, right where you begin. You don't do the entire stage. 
But it's basically this version's the closest thing this version gets to one of those DLC levels in the HD version, where it's the same, the same stage. It's just made a lot more difficult. But unlike the HD version, uh, you can't get hurt in that mission because it's a reach the goal unscathed mission. You have, you cannot get hurt even when you collect rings. There are a number of, just despite the fact that you have five nighttime stages, there are quite a number of missions for the werehog to do, the optional stuff. Most of them are pretty short. One of them is very much an exception. But we're not going to be seeing any of them until we get to the post-game stuff. And I sort of hesitated here. I don't know why, because I don't think I do anything differently. But yeah, so first that happens. And then I hesitate. Luckily, I've got plenty of time. Bouncy, bouncy. Bounce pad. Bounce pad. Bounce pad. No, 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 we're not. We're not at that game yet. We're not going to be at that game for a long time. Thank God. <laughs> it's still going to happen eventually, but at the moment, thank God. And there we go, that is Eggman Land Day. Now it's time for nothing to change at all. There's no cutscenes or anything, we just instantly transition into the night stage. It doesn't even ask you if you want to continue or not. And that's the the uh, Reach the Goal and Scathe mission just unlocked there. All right, next time we begin the night stages. So I will see you guys then.